Hi everyone, this is Jamie. Um, today I'm going to talk about therapy and the importance of therapy. When it comes to therapy, I feel like specifically like trans people, um, gay people, and people who go through different coming out, who have different things in life, and specifically when it comes to LGBT people, uh, obviously we have a harder path. Obviously, there are people who are more privileged, who don't get as many problems when they come out. They don't get as many problems simply due to class differences and etc. And obviously, it depends where you live, how you were born and etc. By how you were born, I literally mean like if it's a wealthy family, where is your family based? Did you move somewhere? Your well, the family's income and etc. And, uh, obviously there's just personal factors, like you can be more open to reaching out, you can be more closed, you can, um, simply be going for abuse and not going for abuse. And specifically when it comes to childhood, and the more I, I age, the more I see that well, being a child, being a teenager is just downright awful. And people don't believe you very often for the things you say because they think, oh, it's a kid, what do they know? So it's not just about the gender issue, but it's like abuse and stuff. Um, so I guess my experience really goes hand in hand with the, the abuse I faced in the past. And uh, it's just very uncomfortable that people didn't believe. I didn't feel comfortable talking to people about it because I got dismissed for so much. And my therapy journey, I, I've actually, I can't remember from the top of my head, but I've had like about five therapists maybe, plus minus. And... Uh, I just couldn't open up to them. So I know that in my case, I went through really severe abuse, but I still wanted to say that even if you, you don't necessarily have to struggle through a very difficult part of life to need therapy. And specifically for trans people, we're very often told that we need to go to therapy during our transition or the beginning or in general. And I do agree with that sentiment. But the problem is that very often when we get assessed whether we're trans or not, we don't get the best therapists. Like for instance, um, the first therapist I got to assess me uh, here, he wasn't that great. And uh, he made me kind of like shut down to talk about my transition because it was back a few years ago when um well I i'm binary but i knew a lot of non-binary people who would have to mask themselves as binary still in those days to get hrt to get the surgeries and um it was really uncomfortable to like water down my look, really think of what I'm wearing to go, think of the questions I'll get, and make sure that I get everything right, because that's the way it was at the time. And uh, it, and those things really stick to you, because I remember one of the questions which stood out to me was, uh, as a child, have you stood up to be and in my case i did it once but i wasn't exactly knowing so and i really want to follow so hearing that that question and thinking that what if i have the wrong answer or i worded wrong and then he told me oh don't worry it's it's not the main question but it's still kind of all these years, I still get nervous 
remembering that question and how uncomfortable I felt. Because to me, follow isn't just about stopping to pee. So that felt an odd question for, for myself. And uh, I've had different therapists which have helped me during different phases, problems of my life. Um, but I felt like a lot of them just kept me afloat. While um, I guess it's also circumstantial with what's been happening in my life. And and getting the right therapist, finally. And uh, you really shouldn't settle for a therapist. And it's, it's a very difficult thing to understand when you need a different therapist, when your therapist is enough, whether you're doing progress. Because in my case, I was just simply not opening up. Like, I was so severely traumatized that I wasn't opening up. Like, no matter what I was saying, doing, venting, I just couldn't get to the bottom of it. And it took a very traumatic experience for me just to end up opening up. And speaking up to my abuser and just like taking every feeling I felt to just say things which I would never say to a person. And after that, it, I kind of like the deep hatred and all the pain started slowly like crumbling so before it was also deep and scorched in me that I couldn't even scoop it out I couldn't understand what it was and um, it's just very difficult and I still have a lot of people who like tell me you don't open up I've never seen you so vulnerable I've never seen you so open and it can be people who I care about it can be people who are just friends and I still find it very difficult to open up so I do understand that it is very difficult to open up and specifically in my case where I didn't have nearly anyone believing me when I was a as a child that I was getting abused and then when I would keep raising that it uh, it would get ignored I would get said that I should think about my abuser and etc so for me it's very difficult to talk about therapy and not mention what's going on and specifically when it comes to therapy I still kind of like, when I get the platform to talk about my abuse, I still have to because I have so much to just open up about because I had it inside me for so long because no one was believing so I just shut down. And I don't mean that you'll find the right therapist and everything's gonna click that you'll just open up in the first session, it doesn't always happen. Like, I've been for quite a few months with mine, my current one, and like, the biggest progress I started doing is probably like a few months old. So it was literally trying to remove all the gunk which was on this top side and now we're like going very deep and it's still very difficult and um, therapists are usually <laughs> very empathetic people so it's also like very interesting and difficult uh, when like 
I open up about certain experiences and like when I talk to therapists, obviously they still give to some extent their pain because they're human. And uh, it's very difficult to see your therapist be taken back by the things you've experienced. So it's a very difficult experience as well. But it's better to tell those things instead of keeping them to yourself. It's very important. So I know I wanted to talk more about trans people and therapy, but it ended up more about my own experiences, my own the abuse I faced and um, just talking about it to my therapist and once you get all that gunk out and you get to talk more about the deeper issues which have been with you for god knows how long um, it just gets difficult because you're not overflowing with the gunk, which doesn't matter, but you're overflowing with some very dark stuff. And it's it's very difficult to go through therapy for that. So it's difficult to live without therapy, it's difficult during the process of therapy, obviously. And also, I just feel like, in my case, because the abuse came from a family member, um, it was very difficult because our society really holds family as something which is sacred. So, like, talking to other people about it within the family, it was like, yeah, but family is sacred sort of thing like you can't cut off some of people and no one wants to face the reality everyone wants to pretend that family is this nice neat house and everyone gets along and it's just very difficult So it's like, even after all these years, like when I open up to certain people, when it comes to like family and who don't necessarily take sides, but you know, it's very uncomfortable because people still want to bat for two things, for the abuser, for me, so. And in general, it's been very difficult because I went through a lot of the abuse because people didn't listen and to hear certain things like it is my fault that I got abused, it is my fault that I didn't speak up enough, it is my fault that I didn't have the balls to just accept the abuse really gets to me and it's very difficult right now with the and looking at the past, not to get angry at everyone who was okay with abuse happening. And I was watching a video on Reddit a, a few days ago, where there was, um, the guy was probably in his 30s now, if I recall correctly, and he was born without cheekbones. I, don't, I mean, if you're in Reddit, you've probably seen the video. But basically, he has um, a very distinct face, and uh, <clears throat> his parents, um, birth parents, abandoned him and put him in an orphanage just because he looked different. And um, eventually, he reached out to them, he found them. Uh, he was adopted, so he had a decent life from his 
from his words, and he was very grateful for the woman who adopted him. But the point was that he reached out to them, and he said that he wanted to meet them. And they just wrote back that, please don't ever contact us ever again, and both signatures from the mom and the dad. And, uh, and he still had the, the energy in him to forgive them, even, and to say that he's thankful for them to give birth to him because he's the reason that they're, they're the reason he's here. And I just have so much hate towards like my abuser, my abusers, and the people who enabled it who didn't say anything. So, like, watching that, and it's like, I don't think I'll ever get to that mindset like I can maybe feel some empathy or like maybe some scattered memories which were positive with my abusers but to forgive and to say it's okay it's I don't think I'm ever capable of that because I tend to forgive people quite easily. Like it takes some times for me to cool off and I forgive people. But when it comes to people who downright abused me and who literally would make me feel unloved, who'd stalk me, who'd close me up in rooms to scream at me. I don't have the energy, the capacity to just say it was okay, because it wasn't. So I still had this sort of interesting discussion in my head where, like I understand where he's coming from, but, and I do understand that we're supposed to forgive everyone and give them that a chance, but I wanted to say that it's okay not to do that. And I do understand that even I look up to people who forgive uh, on a much greater scale than I do. But I still think that the people who don't understand and deliberately cause pain shouldn't be forgiven. And sometimes I just end up thinking different things <clears throat> of um, how I wish I could cause pain. Because I want for so much. And it's very difficult for me to still hear sometimes people defending or not wanting to listen to the abuse I went through. Because, you know, family is sacred and how dare I speak up about a family member. So that's kind of been in, in my head a lot. And... Uh, I don't think that everyone should be forgiven ultimately because there are certain things which are too much. So even though I look up to the the guys on Reddit who was talking that he forgave his parents or there's a very famous example, I'm sorry for talking about religion, but of John Paul II um, forgiving the guy who attempted to kill him. I, I wanted to say I'm no saint, so obviously I won't forgive, but at the same time I want to say that it's okay to feel, I think. So the anger I feel, the frustration. I'd only say probably the only thing which is not okay is to wish 
further help on uh, people who did such things. But even then, and this is where I struggle, where I believe that people who caused a lot of damage shouldn't go away free for certain things, and I find it very hard to live with that. But at the end of the day, the best thing you can do to yourself is to release yourself from the situation. Don't forgive. Don't forget. But move on. And it's very, very difficult, again, for me to accept that these people, these two people, will go on with their lives and maybe nothing will happen. I find that very difficult. So, life is really unfair because I was literally destroyed by two people just because they fucking felt like it. And even when I think about the fact that I spoke up the last conversation I had was saying things that I would never tell anyone else. Like, it gives me some solace that I said extremely painful things for an abuser to hear. And they knew that, obviously, I reached such a point that I was yelling and saying such things. So for someone who really loves themselves and is very, very vain, obviously to hear such things, which I said, is, well, it's, it's gonna cause some ruckus. And I don't know, I just really hate this whole notion of family thinking that you shouldn't take things out of the house. Because at the end of the day, you take things out of the house because they weren't addressed in the house. And it's okay to do that. If you're hurting, speak up. Go to therapy. And find what you want for yourself in the end. So yeah, um, thank you very much for listening. And I'm sorry that I derailed. But yeah, I just really recommend everyone to get help. Because you, you really don't know what kind of gunk do you have inside and if there's something deeper there which you really need to address. So I do stand in the notion that people who are trans should have a therapist who accommodates them through their transition because I also have trouble like talking about this for and I still do. So there's always a lot of stuff going on and therapists are there to make it better and to help you understand yourself. And obviously address your issues or the issues other people had with you. So yeah, thank you very much.